pop-up live session. We host these pop-up live sessions. We have special guests on. The reason we do it as a pop-up is, well, it's a lot easier to do it as a pop-up. Less planning, less scheduling, um, less planning and scheduling for you. We are all inundated with webinars and online events these days. And what we're trying to do here is just provide a space for people in our industry, which is a language services and globalization industry, to congregate and hopefully learn some stuff from our peers in the industry. So if you've got some value to add yourself, reach out to me. I'd love to have you on and we can talk about whatever it is that you'd like to talk about as long as we're adding value. And today, my guest is Dario Cas- is it Casquio. How do I pronounce your last name, sir? Casio. Casio. Dario yeah, Casio. That's it. Oh, you nailed it. Well done. All right. And <laughs> what, what I want to talk about today with Dario is an interesting little, I want to call it a side project or side hustle that he's been working on. Dario came to my attention, oh, I want to say probably like six months ago, because Dario runs a YouTube channel called The Sicilian Wanderer. And I can bring it up over here so I can show you guys. And it's it's, it's a... We're going to play the intro and, and all of that stuff so that you guys can see. But he came across my attention because I was also starting a YouTube channel myself. And I, yeah. you know, Tucker Johnson, I, I started this YouTube channel. It's called Remotely Possible. Or I should be wearing the hat. I even, I even made hats for Christ's sake. <laughs> and it was a very, very interesting experience. And, you know, my company already had a YouTube channel. I didn't need to start a YouTube channel, but frankly, I wanted to do something different and I wanted to play around. I wanted uh, to frankly mess up in public. I wanted to make mistakes and learn and do all of that stuff. And I didn't want to involve my brand's YouTube channel in it. I just kind of wanted to go out there and do do my own thing. Now, that having been said, I haven't touched my YouTube channel for months and months and months because I've been busy. That's very bad. I know. I'm horrible. But Dario, you have. You're publishing (laughs) new stuff all the time. Tell us about it, though. And tell us – well, here – Let's do this. So, Let's play the intro, right? Let's play your channel. Right. Your channel right. Thing. Let's do that first. And then I will turn it over to you for comment. And one thing you can do For those of you listening as a podcast, just beautiful scenes here, walking around different locations, which I'm assuming are all Cork locations, right? That's actually Sicily. That's actually all Sicily. Sicily? Yeah, so tell me about this, because you do a lot of... Well, here, I'll just turn it over to you. Tell us about your... Tell us about this little project that you're working on. Well, the first thing to say, just following up on what you were saying before, is that uh, I'm forever grateful because you were my subscriber number 100, and you gave me the chance to rename my channel from that horrible number, uh, alphanumerical thing that was there to the actual name, which has now, this is any wonder, so nice. thank you, Tucker. Uh, yeah, I was excited. For, for those of you that don't know, when you get 100 subscribers on YouTube, then you can choose your own custom URL. So youtube.com yeah. forward slash whatever it may be. Right. And um, I was I was the 100th person to subscribe. And it makes it makes a big, big difference, especially big when you're trying to reach out to people and pitching. Hey, check my YouTube channel. And you just sent those very long URLs that don't make sense, people get suspicious. Instead, now I have a very classy one, thanks to you. So, <laughs> yeah, it's and it's good. Finger core is that your is that your YouTube? There is a there is a there is a backstory to that. Now that channel, I was managing that channel years ago. Uh, okay, I was in bands in a lot of bands before starting before growing up and getting into localization. Okay, so finger bang. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen the South Park episode when they do a boy band and it's called Finger. Yeah, yeah, I get, was, I get the reference. And that was, that was based off that. And and then what, when I moved to what uh, kind of music it was punk rock? Punk I've rock. Been doing punk rock. We missed whatever. you. People are asking about you in local in San Diego. By the way, really, I, I just got out from hanging out with those cats, and yeah, so I dropped a message and said, "Hey, I'm going to go stream with Dario, so maybe some people will." I know. I'm so sorry. I should have. I, I was gonna participate, but then 
yeah, too much work. I just couldn't do that. I I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. But I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah so back to back to YouTube here. Back to your channel. Yeah. So that channel was, I you know I was using it for my music. Then I was started when I started touring with Thy Majesty. Um, I was basically posting videos with Thy Majesty there, and then there was about ten years of total silence on that channel. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely no activity, nothing at all. And last summer. I was back in Sicily and, you know, exactly what you were saying. Like I was trying to come up with something different, like a side project that could keep me uh, kind of busy and a bit more creative during the weekends. And when everything moved online, there were so many different mm -hmm. webinars and, and online events telling you what to do, how to do, this is what you should do, this is what you should buy. And I was like, I, I had enough. I was back why, home. Why? Why? Why have you had enough? Like, wh what does that mean? Like, you had enough as a consumer of that, or you wanted to do something different? Like, what? What do you mean by that? I w I wanted to do something different. I wanted to. In my head, there sh there should have been less. This is what you should do. This is how you do it, and more like, this is you know what you, what you could do, or you know what. Like experimentation. Give you, yeah, or give you like different. Give you a different point of view on stuff and especially the you know in our, our industry moved everything moved online are you talking and, about like in general or are you talking about like specifically when things went online um talking about how to manage online how to go remote how to um be virtual and hey i'm not going to take offense like i was one of those guys right i started a youtube oh, channel called remotely possible like telling people that was that was my stick right it was like hey everyone's going remote let's talk about how to work remote right exactly Exactly. Well, I did the same. I started the localized five in five last year, and pretty much, you know, everybody we were doing, we kind of doing the same thing, right? And I said, I want to do something different. I keep doing that, but I also want to start experiencing something different because, you know, uh, it's just to give myself a bit more space and maybe, you know, get a bit more creative. And I've always had this thing that in my head, Sicily and Ireland are uh, kind of. They, they have a strange match together. So they're like always, cosmically uh, I, connected. Their auras are aligned. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I should explore that. What's the best way to do this? And I thought of starting a blog, uh -huh. uh, but then I uh, fairly Im immediately, I, I understood that writing is not. Not, well, not for everybody. Be, yeah, it's not it's for not, everybody. It's definitely not I, for me. I'm definitely. writing an article right now for Multilingual Magazine and it's taking way longer than I thought it would, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm like, why is it so hard to write 1,200 words? Yeah, and, and the more you read it, the, the less may, the less sense it makes. Editors so, are worth their weight in gold. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so I said, you know what? I was in this beautiful, beautiful village in Sicily. It's called Torretta Granito. It's the closest point to Africa. So for where I'm from, it's much easier to get to Tunis than to Rome. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it's just a, a there, there's a piece of, of, of the Mediterranean Sea between the two um, points, and you know you're in Africa basically. That must be a really unique culture there, like with all yeah. of the different influences and stuff going on. Yeah, Sicily is definitely a unique place from a historical point of view. It's not, uh, let's say, typical Mediterranean island where you just go to party and, you know, or just to relax. It's more, you know, history and history. I, Palermo is considered the most conquered city in history. The most conquered city in history. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And simultaneously has a lot of history there, right? Well, and, yeah. you know, and as I got to be careful when talking to Europeans about history because, like, <laughs> history where I come from is like 200 years. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, there's there's a bit more. There's a bit more in Sicily. And, yeah. you know, the, but the cool on the converse that, side, where I come from, we are also undefeated as far as being conquered. So, well, are we? I don't know. Uh, the I'm U.S. have we lost a war? I'm sure. I'm sure there's other people that have said we've lost many wars, but according to our propaganda, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> sure about that? Uh, no, it is. It is according to historical records. It is the most conquered city in history. Um, so just just uh, it, and it's for the most part, it's always been kind of a very peaceful coexistence. Probably the the highest point was when the Arabs um, gave way to the Normans. And the two were coexisting for a while. So there's 
Palermo is full of Arab and, and Norman architecture. The Cathedral of Palermo and the Cappella Palatina, which is a, a wonder, is a pure mix of Norman and Arab art and architecture. It's something unique, absolutely unique. And I was in this place, Torretta Granitola. It's a tiny village. It's about uh, 139. I, I, I was going to Google it and bring it up on screen, but I, there's I, no way, unless you pronounce that for me like an American, <laughs> there's no way that I can pull it up. But if it's tiny, there's probably not much anyways. Well, just uh, just think about it. There's there's a bakery, there's a, there's a cafe and a pizzeria, and that's it. Nice. And my kind of place. And, my, yeah, it's my beautiful. My kind of place, yeah. Beautiful. There's there's a so beautiful that, light. that's where you're from originally no i'm from palermo i was born and oh, raised okay. in palermo okay but okay. i go there um i go there on holidays as much as possible uh because the water is freezing i just like the, it's freezing cold water i love yeah. it and i just go there and it's quiet you literally have what i said plus a couple of fishing boats and that's it so you just go there you fully recharge you know i i grew up in a small town not you know, one bakery and two fishing boats small, but small enough and in the country. And it's one thing that I forget is the sound of silence. When you yeah. live in a city, like you legitimately forget what silence sounds like. And sometimes I get it like in brief periods at like 3 a.m. in the morning, I can hear silence. But typically that's an elusive sound. I need to go to the country to find that. Yeah, yeah, and I got to say that I started to value this a lot more in 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 recent years. I was I'm never going to go there. Uh, why would I ever go to a place this quiet? Uh, and okay. I was wrong. I was we're getting wrong. older, Daria. We're getting older. I think we are. That's the that's the place. sign. That's one of the leading <laughs> indicators is that we lose interest in partying and enjoy silence. But right. so, so you started this channel to, to talk about that originally. Um, tell me about Quark, though, because like 90% of the videos that I've watched of yours are talking about Quark. Where's the, where's the connection? Yes. Well, I think, so, as, as I was saying, I think Sicily and Ireland are connected in, in many ways, well, many, many different ways on, on the cultural side, on the political side, on a human side as well. If you think about it, the two, the two islands have a long, long history of diaspora. So there's pretty much all Sicilians and all Irish people would have relatives in the U.S., in Australia, and Canada. Okay. And, you know, it's the same. I've got family in, in, in the U.S. and I've got family uh, in Australia. I was going to say, they all, they all leave and meet in New York City. <laughs> You're talking about Sic Sicilians and Irish. They are, yeah. yeah. There's a lot. Uh, so I always thought, you know, th there is a connection there because we all – at some stage in our history, we all had to leave, whether being deported, as the Irish were deported, you know, in Australia, Bermuda, and the Sicilians were deported as well. Or we just had to leave because we, we couldn't leave in the islands anymore. We just had to, to flee them. And that's one side. That's one big side. The other side is obviously the seeking independence, that trying to, to you know, being conquered so many times that you that you grow that kind of feeling of, I want to keep saving my culture. I want to keep saving my language. And these are two kind of dying languages. Sicilian is actually a language. Uh, it's recognized as a minority language now uh, by UNESCO actually recognize it as a, as a, as a language. It's I am the oldest I, one. I'm ashamed to say I did not know that. Like, and it I, has, I, like I work in the language search. Frick, I run a research company in the language and I was not aware of that. So is it, a dialect of yeah, well, it, now it is. That's that's considered. tricky. That's tricky yeah, to say that, right? But <laughs> is it similar to Italian and other Latin languages? Not really. It's it's been influenced by pretty much all all the different dominations that we have. So it it does come from Latin, just like Italian, but it has a lot of Arabic influence. There's a lot of Spanish. There's a lot of French. Uh, there's there's words that have absolutely nothing to do with Italian. And I'd say the way you pronounce words is quite different. Okay. Uh, Sicilian has, I think it has the, the oldest grammar in what are now considered to be the, the Italian dialects. You the know, the oldest is, grammar, you said? Yeah. yeah. Like codified grammar, like there's actual yes. rules for it and everything. That's yeah. really interesting because like I said, I was just writing an article for Multilingual and I'm talking about stuff like this. And it's interesting to 
it's an interesting, interesting to explore the differences between languages that do have codified grammar rules, um, spelling, stuff like that, and languages that don't, right? Yeah. Because like you need to be able to adjust expectations, particularly around trying to objectify language quality scores around. Yeah. I mean, but hey, I'm getting into geeky language talk here. Sorry. <laughs> Like, just if you're curious, there's there's like Wikipedia is available in Sicilian, so there's it's actually there. So yeah, <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on I swear. it. Swear. All right. Uh, and it has it has one of the oldest literatures as well. So you know, it's it is a language. It for me, it's a language 100. percent I I fully understand for for others, it, it isn't. But it's dying. Uh, less and less people as as, as speaks Sicilian fluently. And that's kind of the same thing that it's happening here in Ireland. Less and less people is, is speak uh, Gaelic. Uh, right. There's only yeah, like when I was living in Dublin. I first of all, find... first of all, okay. First, first announced stupid question of the day: difference between Gaelic and Irish. Uh, I don't think there's any. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> like, because I've always wondered that. I've, I've heard before. Like, there's a difference between Gaelic and Irish. And no, I think it's the same language. It's just uh, you know here. Well, I got. I, I you know I've been living here for nine years now, so I should tell you that there's a big difference. I was actually, it's something uh, we're talking about over the weekend with some friends. Uh, when you say Gaelic here, nine times out of ten, you're referring to Gaelic football, the national sport here. Uh, when you say Gaelic, that's the language. So when you talk to an Irish person and you and you talk and you say, "How about Gaelic?" He would start talking about the GAA. He would start talking about Gaelic football and you know the, how the counties are doing and stuff like that. So uh, the the language here officially is Gaelic. All right, I, I found it. Wikipedia. Yeah. Wikipedia is always correct, right, guys? Uh, <laughs> Irish language, same as Gaelic. It's settled. Settled on air. Awesome. So, so you guys both have diaspora. You both have so yeah. both both are islands. Both have, have the similar history. Both have a long history and current um, like diaspora exporting people around the world. Um, so yeah, and I started exploring more stuff as I as I went along, like finding out that some cities have kind of a twin program going on between Ireland and Sicily. So Killarney, one of the most beautiful cities here. In Ireland, with the with the most beautiful national park I've ever seen, uh, the twin cities Castiglione and Sicilia, which is a medieval town in the mountains of Catania, and they have this thing going on. And there's there's a Facebook page about this exchange between the two cities, and the representatives meet I think on a yearly basis before COVID. So there are connections there. There are connections. If you think about the Irish and the Sicilian, as you were saying in New York. At the beginning of the of the last century, uh, and you know all the bad stuff that they did, but all the good stuff that they did too. So there's always a strong connection. There's there's always been a strong connection between between these two cultures. So I said it's and, time to. And I'm, I'm very the, those two cultures just from an outside perspective. Um, and most of my experience with Italians and um, Irish folks are is taking place here in the U.S., although um, not all of it, not all of it. But what I've found is there are two cultures that are not too opposed to appropriation, right? Like they're, like they're chill with it. They're like, yeah, let's celebrate. Let's, you know, um, am I completely off? Is my perception off on that? Or like when <sighs> – Let's put it this way. How do Italians feel about Olive Garden, right? How do Italians <laughs> – it, 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 you know what I'm saying? I like what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Uh, obviously, with the with the Sicilian Wanderer, I started uh, getting a lot more into Facebook groups. Facebook groups of oh, Irish boy. Americans, yeah. Italian Americans, and – and the way they fight, the way someone says, I'm 100% Italian and I was born in New Jersey and I never visited Italy in my life, but I'm 100% Italian. He gets eaten alive by the crowd online, by the Italians just jumping in there. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay, okay. The same thing happens with the Irish. The same thing happens with the Irish. Okay. But it's, you know, uh, I don't feel that strong about that. I mean, if, if you think, if you feel like you're Irish or you're Italian and you've never visited your you're 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 on time. I would never. I you know, just going back to what you're saying. 
the Olive Garden is not Italian. Let me. I know, I know, I know. Right? So, no, that's a big no. I, I only said that to get a rise out of you. I could have found another example. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, there's many differences. Well, probably what I'm noticing, the more I get into this, it's not really about the culture. It's not really about the way you get raised because obviously you, you people need to understand that uh, there's a hundred years difference. Some people just left Italy 100 years ago. They never went back. They think Italy is what it was 100 years ago. Well, the country moved on. Same thing for Ireland. But one thing you constantly fight on is food. Oh, boy. I'm they sure. fight like crazy, like the crazy. Irish, never Irish too, in all Ireland them. too. Oh, all okay. of them, yeah. Well, I'm trying to think if I no, I don't think we were too proud of our food here in America. We eat Italian <laughs> food. <laughs> I order pizza if I if I'm hungry. That's what I order. But, That's good. Well, so you um. You've gone down the rabbit hole. Like I can tell just by talking to you that like you've had not just that you've done your research because like the level of knowledge and insight you have about these two cultures, locations, whatever you want to call it is you've talked to a lot of people. Like you don't just go out there and film yourself in front of a castle and you read a few facts from Wikipedia. I'm getting the impression like you're you're chatting up the security guards and you're talking to the the museum coordinators and um, and I was I've actually been very surprised. Not only are you publishing stuff on your YouTube channel, um, because it, it, this has been my experience too. It's like you publish stuff, you put stuff out there, and that's great. It does fine. You know, some people look at it. But what it does is it opens up doors for you to start other conversations and people start reaching out to you and saying, hey, like you want to talk about this? Because I found a ton of videos for you on YouTube that aren't on your channel. It's like, hey, look, Dario, the, the Sicilian Wonder did a video on our thing. Did, talk to me a little bit about, about that, about using this platform as a, I hesitate to call it a networking tool, but as as an avenue to build relationships or to meet new people. That's exactly the whole point of this project. It, it, it was never about me, um, not even for one second. It, it was always about trying to connect the two islands. What happened is that there was a massive change uh, when we went into our third lockdown. Okay. Uh, what I, you know how Ireland really relies on the hospitality sector, on the pubs, on, mm. on travel. And one that stopped for, for what, a year and a half now. Pubs never open, never reopened in Ireland, which is probably one of the most, the biggest cultural standpoints in, in, in Ireland. Like you go to the Irish pub, the Irish pub is famous for that. They never open again. That's a place where you go and chat the Irish, it's the, the Irish focal pub, point. Like, it's where people gather. It is. Right? It is. It's exactly. church. <laughs> right? It's almost like a church. Yeah. And you as a foreigner are always welcome there. And the Irish people would start conversation. They would mathematically, they would ask you, how come you're here? Are you here on holidays? What do you think about Ireland? How's the weather? This kind of stuff. And you get to start conversations like that naturally. Now that thing is gone. I'm thinking back to like my first time in Ireland and it's like that Uber driver gave me the whole, he chatted the <laughs> whole way to the Airbnb, right? Like I, I, sh I had a history and he was funny too, right? Like it was yeah. like an entertainer and I was like, holy shit, if all Irish people are like this, then they are. I'm home. <laughs> they are, they are. Uh, oh man! Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. That's why I love this place. It's not just beautiful; the people is beautiful too. And just like Sicilians, they can be a bit suspicious at the very beginning, but they're very talkative ones. You know, you break the ice. That's exactly the way we are, how we are. But anyway, back to the point. I kind of changed the format. I wasn't interested in talking about the places anymore, just showing you around. But I was more interested in using. The, the crowd that I had gathered up to that stage to promote Irish businesses, Irish attractions that have been closed. So I, I started going out. I started reaching out to business owners um, of any kind, whether it was castles, forts, touristic attractions, just to say, look, I have this channel. I could come over the weekend. I could shoot an episode. Maybe you can say a word or two. It's completely free. So you, you can use the video. You can do whatever you want with the video if you like it. 
but if I can help, if I can give the 0.1% of promotion for when we open back, it's all yours. Let's do this. And it started getting traction. So I, I started doing the first, the second. Now it's fantastic because I get people calling me saying, look, I got this, this thing going on here. If you're free, why don't you pop over? And I had amazing experiences, not just for me, but for my kids as well. Uh, I saw one video me. that was like Dario Cascio, the Cascio, sorry, the the Sicilian wander comes with his family, and I didn't get to watch that video. I ran out of time. Where, I I don't think I've seen it. Where is it? I will find it. Keep talking. Thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. that's great. <laughs> um, so yeah, the two weeks ago, I think I had probably the most wonderful experience of my life. Now it can be a bit scary and frightening but we loved it we absolutely loved it uh there's two there's an island right off cove cove is uh, south of cork that's the last stop of the titanic it's famous because the titanic stopped there before before the tragedy that happened okay uh but it's also famous for another thing there's an island right off the coast which is the irish alcatraz it's a uh, it's called spike island well, that's an objectively cooler name than Alcatraz, Spike Island. That's awesome. Spike Island, yeah. It's awesome. And it's 10 times bigger than Alcatraz. So it's a, it's a massive fort that was turned into a prison when the English were, were around. And I was in contact with the, with the management. They, they got us in. They, they got us the, the tickets for the ferry. They, they let us in. They, they organized the guide to take us around. It was such a crazy experience. Think about it. There's punishment blocks for these prisoners before they were deported that are still standing exactly the way the way they were 200 250 years ago so it's this dark cells made of bricks with absolutely nothing nothing at all uh maybe some light from from the top where, that you can reach so you really feel that kind of historical sense once you get there it's an amazing place and, you know I'm lucky enough because normally people would pay to go there. I'm just, I, I get in for free because people is interested in the videos that I make. And to me, it's, it's absolutely humbling. I, I never meant to, you know, for this is any wonder to be a business and I still don't want it to be a business. It's a right, right, right. completely free type of thing. Well, it, it, it's taken on, and that's kind of the thing about side projects, right? Is they take on a life of their own. Um, yeah. One of my recent side projects in the last five years was writing a book, and that book um, turned into a business, turned into this. Frankly, like that's you know just that side project. While you know I had a day job, but I thought, oh, I'm going to write a book with Renato, and it took my life in a completely different direction. Yeah. And I, I think then this is what I tell people about side projects: is most people start with an idea of what they want to do and how they want people to react to that. And both of those expectations are going to get in trouble, right? If you are married to what you want to do or married to how you want people to react, then you're going to be, you're going to be disappointed because you have, first of all, the second one, you have no control over how people react to your content. Exactly. And if you want to be successful, you, it doesn't matter what you want to do. It matters what your users want because successful brands, and that includes personal brands, successful brands follow user needs. They don't follow what they want to do. So it's like, but, but I say all that to say this, which is that not everything needs to be monetized. Right. No, and, not at all. Yeah, and, and I agree. Th this is my this is kind of my my personal struggle is I'm I'm a business person, whatever you want to call me, and like it's hard for me just to enjoy things without worrying about what's the monetization strategy, what's the rollout, what's the go to market, how do I how do I leverage this? Like not every so I would you know I typically will agree, no hesitation, yes. Not everything needs to be monetized. But then I would say, you know, comma, some things can be loss leaders for other products that are monetized, right? And it's, it's, that's not a good place to be. That's not a good place to be. And that's, and that's one of the joys that I found in this, this, this YouTube channel is like, I want to go out there and add some value with nothing expected in return. And yeah, it's important to do that for my I sanity. Think it is. 
right? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. That's the thing. And then you never know what happens. I would would have never thought, not even for a single second in my life, that I was going to end up having a column, a weekly column on a on a newspaper. Uh, I didn't even know about this. Yeah, I started a collaboration about a month ago with The Echo. It's one of the oldest newspapers here in Cork. Oh, wow. And I have I have my column every Sunday where I talk about exactly what I do with the channel. Uh, so every every Sunday we'll publish an episode of one of the places that I visited in Cork. I write a very, very short article that doesn't take me. It's not even the 200 words that you were saying before. So it's a very, very short one. And, you know, that keeps me happy. That keeps me Again, I'm totally humbled. I would have never thought it all started with an interview that they 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 reached out to me just for a piece, just to say, you know, um, what else? What is it that you're trying to do? Why why cork and this kind of stuff? And a couple of days after, they asked me to send a few pictures, and I didn't know they were going to print. So it was actually going out on paper. So it was my first time on a, on an Irish newspaper, and I wasn't even aware that that was going to happen it was so cool it's my my daughter was jumping like dad you're famous is it no i'm not but it's cool isn't that <laughs> funny though it's like you know in the time when we grew up it's like only mythical people like legends were on tv yeah. and nowadays anybody can be on tv Right. Yeah. Point and case. We're right here. We're coming to you live. We've got some questions that I, I've been neglecting the questions over here. So let's yeah. go to take a look at those. Um, first off, Tom Hayenkamp, in order to extend your network viz to give classes in a large number of foreign languages and make translations. I wonder if your age plays an important part. I have gained lots of experiences in the course of many years. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure if this is a question or a comment, but thank you very much, Tom, for bringing this in here. Um, what is the role of age? I mean, let, let's take it in that direction. And Tom, if we're taking it in the wrong direction, just let us know in the com in the chat. Um, how does age play into this, Dario? Because you and I aren't. We're not old. We're not young. Um, but we're out there doing new stuff. We're you know experimenting. We're making mistakes. You know, how old is too old to get out there and start doing stuff like this? I I don't think you're never. Uh, it's it's not a matter of age. You're never really too old. I mean, especially if you. It, it was a leading question. <laughs> right? I would be disappointed <laughs> if you said anything else. <laughs> No, but I mean, it's true. It's true. I mean, to start something like this, you just need absolutely no budget. You need absolutely no skills. You just have to go and make mistakes until you, you get it right. On the other side, I think I, I, I probably wasn't able in a different time of my life to do what I'm doing now. So I'm probably capitalizing on some of the experiences I've done why, in the past. Why is that, you think? Um. It, you know, when I wasn't, especially when I was touring with the bands and you're 23, 24 and you're, you're touring Europe and, you know, your, your face is on Wikipedia and you're about to record a live DVD, you think you're, you think you're the shit. Uh, oh, I, I've never stopped thinking I'm the shit <laughs> ever since I was 21. My ego just keeps getting bigger. <laughs> no, I, I, I started to control that because I, I started to understand that, you know, it's completely pointless. You can do things. You can do things in a completely different way. And you can actually add value to other people, not just to yourself. And that's right. what I started to do. Right. And I, that's, that's a mind shift change is, yes. um, you know, if someone were to ask me, I, I think a lot about such things. If someone were to ask me, Tucker, what's your goal? What's your goal in life? And you have like three words to describe it. And I would say to be useful. Right. Like yeah, I, I, I think that uh, humans, we humans want to be useful members of society. We, we live in a society. We want to contribute to that society in a positive way. Another way of thinking about that is saying, you know, to add value. Right. And yeah. I talk about that all the time on this live cast because, you know, I always encourage people like, yes, we have fun. We talk about things. We go off on tangents, but ultimately we need to add value. And that value could be facts, figures information, trainings, data, stuff like that. To your point earlier, there's a ton of that out there, yeah. right? So it's yeah. like, okay, how else can we add value? We can add value by, you know, having better production value. Like, so I put a lot of work into this. Um, you can add value by being entertaining, 
right? So yes, you are getting facts, you are getting figures, but it's being presented to you in an entertaining way. So there's different ways to add value, but um, I think it's crucial, and I'm talking to other people. I was just talking to someone in local in San Diego who wants to start a podcast or who is starting a podcast, and I tell people, don't start a podcast for you. Start a podcast yeah. for your audience. Your audience doesn't exist yet, but you need to talk to them. You need to add value to them. This isn't about you. This isn't about making, getting, this isn't about your personal brand, right? That's why people sometimes start projects because it's for their personal brand. And I'm telling you, sorry, this is my rant. I should just put my hair so I can, um, I'm telling you that if you're starting things just for your personal brand, please reconsider not because it's not going to be effective, not because it's not going to work, but because you're going to be disappointed. And, you know, as, as Dario and I were just saying, it's, it's my sanity is the reason. Like, I need to do things with no monetary goal, with no professional goal um, for my sanity, right? That's where I get fed. I need to go fishing. I need to go ride my motorcycle. Why do I like riding motorcycles? Because it is impossible to check email when I am on my motorcycle. <laughs> True. Right? That's true. And that, that's literally like why I like riding. Not at, well, riding motorcycles is fun as shit, right? Don't it get me is. wrong. It is. But the, the added bonus is that you're forced to be in the moment. And I like doing things these days that forces you to be in the moment. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, uh, if I go back and watch the first 10 videos that I made, oh, terrible. don't do that. Never yeah, do that. You know, sometimes I do, like, even, you know, j just to see technically what should I do. Oh, man, they were so bad. Like, the audio was all over the place and distorted. And I know. I, yes. I was so slow. My narrative was terrible. Terrible. So if I look back now, I'm like, do you write scripts oh, or do you improvise? Like, on the spot and then edit? I'll tell you a secret. Most of the times I improvise. Well, I find I'm not against it. I prefer improvising, but when I was recording videos, I would write scripts and I have teleprompter. Like I'm looking into a teleprompter right now, right? Um, so like I like scripts, not because like I'm a script elitist, but because if I don't write a script, I'm going to spend five times as much time or five times more hours editing that video. So in the long run, it was just easier for me to write scripts. Yeah, no, sometimes I did, uh, but I got to say 90% of the times I just went there with nothing at all, just a camera. Uh, but I bought a drone now, so I'll be going with a camera and a drone now. <laughs> you are, okay, okay. So this is the dark side of becoming a creator that people don't talk yeah. about is the money that you spend into it. Because it's just like, any, it's just like any hobby, right? It's, and... My wife is not pleased. <laughs> My wife is not pleased, neither is my CFO, because I use the company card. <laughs> so I wanted to show you this, though, because like for those for you and for those of us that um, that um, have been around for a while and been watching Nimsy for a while, these are some of our, our initial <laughs> videos. And, you know, I joke about don't go back and look at the video quality. Oh, here's Sarah. Let's watch Sarah. Don't go back and look at the video quality, but sometimes it's good to go back and look at the video quality just to see how far you've come. And I'm like looking at this, I'm like, oh man, wow, look at that resolution. It's horrible. The green screen, the white balance. You know, three years ago, I didn't know what white balance was. Yeah. So it's 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 neat to go back and look at those. And I the reason I want to bring these up, and I'll tell you what. The, we could very easily go and take down all of these videos. God, they look so ridiculous. Um, they, we could very easily go and take down all of these videos and say to ourselves that, you know what, this, is, um, this was great for the time, but this is not the level of quality that we would come to expect from our brand these days, so we're going to remove these videos. We don't do that because, it, to me anyways, it's important. I want Nimsy my company to be a source of inspiration for others, right? So I want others, like when I go to a concert and listen to a band to use your a music metaphor, like I get inspired by the mediocre bands, not by the professional bands. Why? Yeah. Because I think I could do that. I, I'm a piano player and saxophone player and whatnot, right? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, that's a tangent we can go down later. <laughs> and it's kind of the same way here. It's like, People, when they watch super well-produced, high-resolution videos, that's not, 
inspiring them. That might be inspiring them to follow the company, follow Nimsy, but that's not inspiring them to go out and try it themselves. And um, what inspired, what I found is inspiring to others is just doing and not being afraid to go out, make mistakes, and learn from those mistakes. And yeah. I get people all the time reaching out to me like, hey, Tucker, can you help me with that? Sure, sure, sure. Let's talk. Let's talk. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it, it's something that I, I think it's something that everybody should do. And, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is, right before well, I started, it doesn't this, have to I be a... YouTube, it doesn't have to be YouTube, but no, 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 right? no, no, you're no, just absolutely. talking about like a side project, a side hustle, a general, side hobby. General. Yes. Okay. Right before I started this, I bought a drum set and I have a drum kit here an electronic drum kit right there. And I thought I was, you know, going to start and be serious with drumming and it was going to be another instrument that I could play, blah, blah. I just, I, I don't really play it anymore. I just understood that I'm never going to be good at it. So I'll just have fun. That's okay. Uh, but oh, that's, and that is all, that's another good point is like, I like doing things that I'm not good at because yeah. it keeps me relatively humble. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I need to struggle. I need to be challenged, um, not because like yeah. my brain requires exercise, but because in challenging myself, it reminds me that, oh, shit, like you're not as cool as you think you are, Tucker. But it's yeah. funny. You, you bought a drum set like right before I started all of this stuff. I started a um, I was doing web comics. I, I was starting I was starting a comic. Strip. I was drawing comic strips and yeah, it's silly. It's silly, but it was something to do. It was something outside of work. And frankly, it's something that led to everything. Le you never know what things are going to lead to, right? Exactly. Those, those comics actually ended up in my book, a lot of them. I ended up drawing some comics and putting them into the book that I ended up publishing, yeah. which led to Nimsy, which led to everything else. So, no, absolutely. I fully agree there with you. Just just start doing stuff. Because from uh, what no, Nothing I've happens read, if nothing happens, right? That is absolutely. That's, that's what I go with always. Now, I'm talking to... Oh, we've got comments, um, too. Don't let me forget about those. Yeah, oh, let me just, absolutely. Let's just say hi to Rodrigo. Am I late? Hey, for this? Rodrigo. Hi, Rodrigo. And Sri. Hi, Havanti. Hey. Hi, Yanti. I can't read the font. Good to see you. All right. I guess I guess I lied. We don't have comments. Sorry, Dario. I just totally interrupted you. No, no, no. It's cool. What I was I was just following up on what you were saying. The the, the very cool thing that is happening right now to me with the Sicilian Wonder is that I'm actually working on my first mini documentary. So it <laughs> went from that kind of stuff to an actual mini documentary that I'm that I'm shooting now. God damn! I, I love. I I'm sorry. I just get excited about hearing about this kind of stuff. It's um, cool. It's cool. And it's stuff that happens during the weekend. It's not stuff that, you know, you don't have to, to drop your job. You don't have to be, uh, you know, afraid of doing this kind of stuff. Nothing happens. You just weekend is your free time. You do whatever you want. And from, from nothing at all, or from just you playing and, and boozing, that's what I was doing before. Yeah. Wow. But <laughs> editing videos. It's uh, it's it's a major change. Like uh, me doing the documentary, not a chance. If you talked to me last year, oh, man. You know, it's funny. Is like this, this. I'm sorry. This live cast has just turned into you and me swapping stories, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I just got done producing my children. So my my children are in preschool, and they every year they at this preschool they have a school play where we go to a church and there's blah blah, blah and it's just production well, this year we can't do that because of covid and so they did it virtually and they asked me to produce like the video there was green screens involved and special lighting and it's um yeah it was fun it was a lot of fun I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a kid with my toys Right, I've got all of yeah. these cool toys, these cameras, these microphones, and stuff, and I'm just looking for an excuse to go out there and do them. Uh, sure. When you do stuff with kids, it's just a completely different experience. It's so stressful sometimes, but yeah. it's so like it, it's human, fun, so beautiful. It's yes. fun. It's and, it, it, it's super fun. So I had like this one thing where I had the green screen. And there was like a train that was coming, and it like ran over the kids, and the kids went, "Oh my gosh, they love it! They just watch it over and over again." <laughs> Yeah, they, exactly. they think That's they think I'm like Steven Spielberg. <laughs> it's awesome. 
<laughs> well, Dario, we've, right we've been doing this for about 45 minutes now. I see my timer here, and uh, in my experience, that's the sweet spot, 45 minutes. Um, not a lot of people hanging out with us today, but those of you that are down there, thank you so much um, for joining. Thanks, guys. Follow Dario. Like, he's super cool. Thank Go you. find the, the Sicilian Wanderer. Like, don't just follow him. Like, reach out to him. He's absolutely just uh he's one of those weirdos like me who would just talk to anybody yeah Yeah. Uh, big time just just give me your feedback guys whatever you want to say if it's brutal just just bring it on don't worry about it and but i'm I'm curious now about that video that you were talking about about the guy saying hey this is any wonder it came i want to watch yeah i I was trying to find it but i'll look for it i didn't want to be distracted while i was talking to you so um (laughs) i couldn't find it but i will try to find it but yeah that's what's neat not just that you have a youtube channel but you're making guest appearances on others you have a column in a magazine You're, you're producing a documentary and a mini documentary a mini okay sure fine a mini documentary <laughs> right you need to talk to multilingual magazine by the way talk to mario line over there because like we're doing documentaries and stuff now too on the multilingual right. side so yeah it could be some That's synergies cool. yeah absolutely let's 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 talk um, yeah super happy but anyways all because you did something right all, all because... because i was bored in a fisherman village and i did my first meeting well thank you for doing it dario you're <laughs> welcome back anytime i will see you if not i will see you on clubhouse i will see you Absolutely. on social media i will see you around so everybody join me in uh, thanking dario as well we... I thank you tucker it's it's been amazing it's always cool talking to you and yeah let's do this again whenever you want all right we'll stick around afterwards when, when we're done and we'll we'll finish up but right now just a quick reminder guys if you're not following nimsy insights Please do so right now, not for me, but for you, because if you are not following us, if you're not subscribed to us, then you won't be notified when we go live. These are not announced. They are not scheduled. We just do these pop-up events. So follow, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, all of that jazz. And with that, I will bid everybody a farewell, and we will see you soon. Cheers. Cheers.